In today's episode of EU4, I will show you not only how to survive this falling Byzantine Empire, not only how to rebuild it and defeat the Ottomans, but also how to become a horde, a Byzantine horde, which even earns money. Welcome guys, here is Lucas, a small Polish YouTuber who likes to play EU4 and prepare guides for this game. In order to play as a Byzantine horde, you cannot start a campaign as a Byzantine. Logic! So be careful, if this is how you wanted to get the Basileus, unfortunately not this way. However, you must start the campaign as any horde, whether European or Asian, or possibly as a tribe such as Circassia. Personally, I chose the Great Horde, because it is great, to be honest, mainly because of this. It has easy access to the sea, yes, to the Black Sea. Do not be mistaken with the Caspian, because in this game it is not the sea, it is a lake. And most importantly, we have quite good relations with the Ottoman Empire. It is true that we will be at war with them very quickly, but the point is to give us access to Byzantium. We can also put up a fairly large number of troops, which is another big plus. We can also put this country in a, a lot of debt, which will be very necessary. And we can also have money from the sale of titles. We also have a lot of them. It is a much better choice, in my opinion, than Crimea, which most of these things do not have. But if someone is already leaning on this Crimea, then pay attention to the fact that the Ottomans very often hate you. Very often. Because of this, you will not be able to reach the Byzantine territories. You can only use your fleet and land. But attention, Byzantium initially has a larger fleet than yours. So the Great Horde. Our natural ally is Uzbek and very well because it is a powerful horde. If any of the other hordes such as Nogai, Kazan or even Crimea like you, it is also worth taking allies with them. So that Moscow when it gets bored with Novgorod does not attack you because your armies will be busy. Very busy. We also improve relations with the Ottoman Empire as soon as possible and with Lithuania because we also need to go through their territory. We usually don't need rivals, but if you want, you can take such Nogai, Kazan or Crimea, but only if they also have you as a rival. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And slots and everything. Your ruler, as if to say, is a good mine amoeba. Let's not be afraid to make him general. Maybe we'll get a good general, for example, with a bonus to the siege pips, which is on the prop. We also want to focus on military points, and the only advisor who will be employed by us are also military points. Morals, discipline, interchangeably. We sell the land very quickly and from the privileges we basically take everything we can, because why not? Especially additional human resources, greater tolerance. We won't need governing, so we're left with two privileges. We can take missions or others. Here, I just got a nice and quick one. I don't take the land, I care about these bonuses. Besides, I'll get it anyway by conquering Circassia. On December 12th, we take royal marriage with Uzbek if he comes and we attack Circassia right away. Hurry. Let our military commander attack her territory as soon as possible. After breaking her army, we want to quickly occupy literally all of her territory. We also send diplomats to improve relations with Moldova. It is also worth looking at the list of mercenaries, so to speak, and well, there will be some cool commander. Well, unfortunately, I don't think there is any cool one that I can recruit. Unfortunately, not too much, although two to siege is very OP. However, we will recruit them only at the time of our war with the Ottoman Empire, and this one is just around the corner. We take the passage from our neighbors so that I don't have to take them later. We conquer the entire territory of Circassia, plus a lot of money. Then we burn their territory, because it is obligatory as a horde. But then we only core these two provinces, uh, these two. I also increase the autonomy, because I don't care about these provinces at all. I don't want them to start any riots on my back when my armies will be in the Byzantine. I recruit a little more cavalry. You know, hordes and cavalry are combined and work together. All the more so that if you pay attention to the pips, these dots our cavalry has a lot more of them than infantry. And now the most important thing Chad likes the most, uh, there is of course war without Cassius belly with Byzantium. Damn. Practically right away, we're going straight to Constantinople. I'll tell you honestly, if the Volga will be in this war, ignore it totally. Constantinople is the most important. Unless you come across somewhere here on their army, this is when you destroy, occupy the entire territory of Volga and take it out of the war as soon as possible. Uh, we would also start the process of building a spy network for the Ottoman Empire because it will be a much more difficult war. God, where was this option? Where was this option? Oh, there it is. Damn. And now we have an exciting wait 
for these fortresses to fall. <laughs> oh, and as if what? In most guys, people usually tell you to cancel the forts on the hordes. But no, leave this one. Uh, this one in Astrakhan can be very useful to us. And to be honest, save our asses more than once during this campaign. Would the entire Byzantine army be in Athens, Greece or somewhere around here? Oh, they are. Ye only these are mountains. Okay, we don't attack here. Why does Greece have mountains? I don't understand it. <gasps> no, Venice attacked Byzantium. That is bad. Fortunately, we occupy everything. Well, almost everything. Bye-bye, Wallachia. Bye-bye. And we could almost end the war with Byzantium, only, oh no, we can't take their territory. Oh, how is that possible? Was Luca stupid and didn't know it? Well, I know we can't. But, so we are waiting for these provinces to join us. Provinces attached to our great horde. And we can eat Byzantium, we can even have some gold. But we don't make any vassals, we don't want war with Venice. And here, attention, don't be tempted to burn these provinces. We don't want that. We want to play after that as Byzantium. So we don't want to make them a weak Byzantium. Do you get it? Remember the non-core provinces? provinces after Circassia, we can sell them to our neighbor. We will always get some money and we won't have to worry about rebellions from these provinces, which as a reward makes us a rival. Really? Well, never mind. I released Circassia. I won't worry about them. Ottoman fights Kandar and Karaman. Okay, cool. A better option would be their war with Venice. But Kandar, Karaman is also a good option. Yeah, at least that's what it seems to me. Moreover, there is a good chance that we will be their second target, so uh, you have to attack him. That's why I recommend recruiting this army in our capital with that cool general which had two points to siege. Uh, I guess he just died. No, it is. It's probably... Oh, and such a great company we will also recruit. How and yet we take this free company to have a total of about 40,000 troops. Because Osman has 40,000, so it's worth having about the same. We do not core Constantinople, we only core Greece. Uh, even if there are some riots here because the unrest are quite big, it's a good chance that Ottoman will clean them for us. As for the rebels, I'll tell you honestly, we can either destroy them or accept their request. What did I do? I wasn't supposed to click it. Okay, and we start a war with the Ottoman Empire and it will be a hard war. Don't think, don't think it will be easy. No, it will be hard. We attack and the first thing we do is run away. Uh, really, somewhere around here we have to take the army back. That's all we need to come here, to escape again. Never mind. We have to go back, let Ottoman pass into our territory, disperse his forces. And as long as I remember then, perhaps Constantinople should also be short earth like this. For there is a fortress here, sure. We get some downsides, but before this province starts making money for us, it's gonna take some time anyway. And you see, I give one army to Edan. I'll see if I can get it, maybe not, because it's the capital, so, so it's nice to be down. It will hurt Osman very much, he's still fighting a war. Never mind. And right now I'm waiting, I'm watching what will happen, and reduce the speed to two. So, don't think this is an easy war. Oh, if a part of the Ottoman army will come and so it stands far away, then we can easily attack it. Especially if we fight on flat ground, that is, no trees, no mountains, it's flat. Then we will win, despite considerable losses, because unfortunately, the Ottoman Empire is ahead of us in technology, and as the Great Horde, it will be hard for us to overcome it. Because how to say, we haven't even heard of feudalism yet, therefore the cost of technology is increased by 50%. That's why we avoid big battles. Horde is meant to be a horde and attack in packs, literally. There should be at least twice as many of you as your opponent. And when he attacks across the river and on flat ground, this is actually an even bigger bonus for you guys. You want to take such defensive battles, right? Because as hordes, you have, oh, such a nice bonus. Increasing damage in the charge phase, that is when your cavalry gives a big boom boom to Ottoman. Unless you're unlucky with the rolls and he deals you four times more damage. That's bad in general. Even very. But usually, you will inflict more damage on him. Much bigger! That's why I took these flat territories. They all have a river crossing. Uh-uh. And I'm trying to make it for Osman to go and attack us. When we stand on these rivers, possibly, well, when I'm standing on his capital. True, I am looking to see if I can attack his capital. But if I see Ottoman army somewhere around here, I flee to these territories and take the battle to the chest. E? And the best option is when Ottoman army crosses the strait. Just let's be honest, I'm taking a bit of a risk at this point. I don't know what's behind. The Ottoman army here could be here. Maybe another 15,000 goes here, maybe not. If I hadn't won two battles just now, well, but I know how many troops Ottoman has, I would never go to this battle, despite these minus two points for the opponent. And yes, he has a tragic modifier and we will certainly inflict heavy losses on him. True, shall we inflict these losses on him? Hello? 
now. I also see that I don't need to conquer any fortress. It's enough that I have a capital by some miracle, which is weird. I thought I had to make at least one fortress, never mind to end this war without taking their capital. But I would also like to have access to Serbia because we know that there is a mine in Serbia. Cows? No, a gold mine in Kosovo. That's it. And it would be nice to get one province too, which is purely Bulgarian. But I broke it and I don't have a way to the other side. Oh no, what a facepalm. No. And unfortunately, Epirus won't let me pass. There's no chance of that. So we end the war as follows. Hey, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I am still waiting for the coring of Greek lands to our territory. After all, these points have to be clicked somewhere. We're doing dev, dev, dev in the annexed provinces. Are deleting the army. We can also rectify the army for the remaining manpower and also delete it. But we probably won't need it. This horde is heavily indebted, has revolts, so... It's about to collapse. We can also release Astrahan to make the horde weaker. And attention, this is super important. Don't go bankrupt. Let your horde be just before the limit. Mm. Well, I'm a bit short of this limit, but it will probably decrease as the month ticks. Why so? Well, if you go bankrupt, then any released vassal will also start out bankrupt. Just like you get a lot of corruption. Each of your vassals will have a lot of corruption. You know what it is. And now it's time to become Byzantium. Well, so you just have to select the Diplomatic Options panel, Release Vassal, and you choose from the whole list Byzantium. Finally, remember to mention that you want to play him, right? What a nice ruler I got. Six for, for, for the first time, 20 years old. But let's get back to the core. Well, if you think you're already a horde, I'm sorry to disappoint you. A few patches ago, you would have been a horde. Only it was too strong. And Paradox changed that. You are currently starting as a tribe, such a tribe, you know, who sits in tents, nomads, etc. And uh, you are a mighty Byzantium with a world capital. It doesn't matter, but you can become a horde and we will strive for it. It doesn't change the fact that as a tribe, you have some really nice governmental reforms in the beginning. You can increase your income from vassals, increased income from your taxes, or we can even have tributes. We can put in extra bonuses for our army by killing our government. I do not recommend even more money from vassals. And that's a pretty cool solution if it wasn't for the first one. So the, the core creation cost is 10% less. Yeah, yeah, this is such a strong modifier that I choose it right away. The missions are all Byzantine, which is great. We are Orthodox, which is also very strong. Although, to be honest, I must try the Sunni Byzantium horde sometime. But maybe if you want, let me know in the comment if something like this interests you. As Byzantium, we also have very strong ideas, especially in military terms. Increased manpower, increased discipline. What do you know, manpower, resources, plus a lot of discipline? Well, how not to love such Byzantium? Uh, uh, we'll play it. But, but, <laughs> so what next, you can ask? Well, we still have to wait. Because we have a period of peace with the Great Horde until 1458. Well, unless you want to wage war with them right away. But I don't recommend it. Because it's really a lot of aggressive expansion points. Better to wait. And before that, break the alliance between the Great Horde and the Uzbeks. Why didn't I? Of course, all this so that you have more interesting material on the channel. Athens recaptured. Birth of the Phoenix. Well, such bonuses which I like at the beginning. Unfortunately, I am very hurt by the autonomy we have in our provinces. We have to reduce it everywhere. This is a very big minus. To be honest, even to the point that I include edicts everywhere to reduce autonomy. We even have some states and even some privileges given away. Why do we have them at all? I don't know. You can write me in the comment. Because that, to be honest, really surprised me. But I want monarchy points in every state. We must have them. And besides, we will need cheaper advisors. Because we also want to have these, especially the military one. We absolutely must. And we need Diplo guy. Let's take a gentleman who will at least pay us back. And let's save on an administrative advisor. Fortresses down immediately because you can't afford them. And they may come in handy at a later stage. Especially since we have pirates in Rhodes and pirates in Tunis. So everyone can pirate our shores. Remember to send the traders because they also sit on their ass, do nothing. If it's very bad, then we can delete the fort in Macedonia and the fort in Morea. But never delete the forts in Gallipoli and Constantinople. Never. Uh, I intend to use the next five years to improve relations with our rivals of the Great Horde. And there are quite a few of those. Oh, we also inherit stability from our country that releases us. Good to know. Keep that in mind for the future. I might remember too. I don't think so. Uh, why? Now really now my rebels have done it. Well, they're occupying roads, so soon it will be ours. It's ours now. Uh, but of course, they pirate up my coast before. And when they pirate me up, you can see I raised the forts right away. Raised forts accelerate devastation decline, which is super important. 
because Devastation lowers all stats practically in provinces. As soon as I have some cash, the first thing I build is not an army, but galleys. We need galleys and quite a lot of them, according to future wars with the Ottoman Empire. Here I will use the standard tactic of blocking them on the straight. I love the trick for cheaper advisors. So you know, we recruit the army for all our manpower. We take the mission, we choose for example the one for manpower. We are undoing army recruitment and it's done. And I have a cheaper advisor for that. Oh, this guy. Although in this case it's the army that's recruiting again because they need it anyway. Kazan will support our aspirations for independence. Let's insult the Dane and ask Moscow to support our aspirations for independence. And that's great because we're getting a really powerful ally in the future. Somehow he has an alliance with Hungary. I don't know how it happened, but we're taking him. The more that I am concerned about the Ottoman army on our border, okay? And with allies... DENIED! And no, it's not a war with Ottoman. A war for our freedom first, never mind. Uh, first, the war for freedom where we get really powerful support. And against us will be the Horde and its ally which I forgot. Uh, I am also improving relations with Hungary. There is a good chance that they will be better. And I'm going to take this province. Because honestly, it's the only one I care about in this war. Because we will have access to Serbia, which has only an alliance with Herzegovina. Hungary doesn't guarantee them in, and they still have three years of peace. So let's get ready for another war. You, yes, a little overkill, but of course the Ottoman Empire must thwart my plans. It attacked Moldavia, that is, it drew Moscow into a hard war. And Moscow and Poland are fighting together, side by side, against Osman. What happened? At that moment when you see the Lithuanian fleet almost drowning the Ottoman fleet, but eventually they have to retreat. And honestly, for me, it's a pretty good time to attack the Ottoman Empire because he has an army on one side, so I can take the whole other side of the country for him, unless he has some allies. <laughs> well, unfortunately it does. It's no, it's not a good time. Hordor, free Byzantium, plus we add provinces for our allies to get influence points from them, of course, or not to lose too much. And that's it. Access to Serbia to claim Kosovo and release a Bulgarian vassal. This is super important to do it in that order. And as long as I remember, you have to choose your rivals. I think Serbia can be our rival. Surely the Ottoman Empire can be our rival. And then I would think about it because Venice is not necessarily Genula can be and now. If we ever get to a situation where you can lose your alliance with Moscow by an alliance with Kazan or Crimea, save the alliance with Moscow. This is the most powerful country you can ally with. The hordes will fall anyway, at last. And now I'm going to do what no one expected. I am attacking Serbia, about which I want to get at least Kosovo. Although I'm tempted to have a slightly bigger war. But no, Kosovo is important, the rest not so much. Especially since Skandenberg is still alive. How come? It's time to crush your opponent. Well, maybe not completely crush, but we won the battle. Oh. But why? Well, we break the rebels. They made my first war a little difficult for me. But let it be. Ottoman gets wrecked by Moscow. What is going on here? Okay, it's a lot easier for us because how to say, the war with Serbia is popular. Everyone has it. This country is in a difficult situation right now. But what did we get? What we got is ours. Herzegovina, I let go. Maybe an alliance? Maybe there will be. Royal marriage to Hungary and the alliance is closed. And great, we have an alliance with Hungary. So now I feel very, very safe. In fact, we can break our alliance with Crimea instead. We absolutely don't need him. And now, yes, I was waiting for the right moment to attack the Ottoman Empire. Such a moment as their entire army is in Greece Island. Literally, their entire army is here. Therefore, it is time to win the land for Bulgaria. True? Oh, Hungary can help me. No, well, unless it turns out that I need their help breaking walls and we attack right away and again remember every single day attack consolidation attack consolidation attack consolidation until this fortress falls no matter how many soldiers you lose you must conquer this fortress well at least i have to you can do it guys yes and so the entire ottoman army was trapped on this island literally army won't move from here and i am going to take the ottoman capital i separated exhausted units from the army let them regenerate and admittedly, I doubt that any of you will be as lucky as me, but there will definitely be a war with the Mamluks at some point. Surely at some point Ottoman will go to cooker his claims with Karaman, and then you should do the same. Only you know, then you block him in this strait, and you conquer everything that is in the Balkans. I left the heavy ships at sea and repair the galleys as soon as possible, and then I switch places. Galleys will guard the straits and heavy ships will repair themselves. No, 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 we can't let them take this fortress. It would be death for us. 
Even though there are quite a lot of opponents here, I decide to declare this battle and then we'll take care of them. <laughs> Don't forget about the war objective, right? I forgot about conquering this province, stack wipe of Ottoman troops. It's always a beautiful view, isn't it? Fortress will be captured. Now let's go and occupy the rest of the Balkans. Of course, let your vassal pay you to maintain this fortress. To be honest, I haven't been conquering Ottomans so pleasantly for a long time. Well, closing them on this Greek island, that's how I did it. Oh, I'm pleased with myself. Well, I, I hope you like this trick too, um, that it is worth leaving such islands for the enemy. For example, it is worth building a fort on such an island so that the Ottoman would move on it, he would have to conquer it. And then you cut it off on the other side, it's worth doing these things. For example, when we place Denmark, there are also such islands here. Or does Sweden have such an island here? Poland may have Ezel very soon. There are very useful places to cut off enemy troops. It's time to end the war with the Ottoman. And remember, in this period, before the era of absolutism or reformation, it is much more profitable to give the province to our vassal directly. In such a peace deal that you give him control of provinces and, you know, tick, and is a vassal occupies province, right? Than taking a return core provinces. For return core, you will pay more war score and aggressive expansion, I checked. And if you don't believe it, check it for yourself. I leave Eden and these provinces here to fight another war with the Ottoman Empire in a moment. Because uh, maybe I'll take the Koseli province. Because the one fortress less for us to conquer, so why not? I like such wars. I could also take this province here, yes, to, <laughs> to border caravan. But to be honest, I'm not really looking to grow fast right now. On a quick growth, on a conquest. No, I don't care about conquest, because unfortunately, newly conquered provinces usually have a lot of autonomy. For example, here we have 90% autonomy. Here I grow my autonomy because I fight wars, never mind. And this means that we have a slower progress of our government reform, and we want to be a horde as soon as possible. So we conquer less, then we conquer more and faster. Or let's conquer for vassals. You understand, don't you? Good Uncle Ottoman repays our loans. After all, Bulgaria is surprisingly loyal and baby was born. Unexpected. Well, that's what I didn't expect. For the first time, I think I see that Burgundy joined the Empire of Saint Roman instead of becoming a puppet of France or Austria. Interesting. The Empire is growing. If I played Austria, I would be very happy. Just like. I'm glad my gold mine is already level 10. Of course, I accept Serbian culture. We like Serbs. Wow. I'm even on the plus side. We're running a renaissance. This allows us to improve our technology. Yes, now we can choose the first ideas. And here, attention, remember we're supposed to play as a horde. So the most powerful horde idea is of course administrative and diplomatic. This is the most powerful combination to set up. So you want to have these two ideas. The second very strong ideas for the horde are humanistic and offensive, thanks to which you will have a very stable horde, which can conquer, conquer, conquer and do not explode. But I plan to play this horde quite unusually. That's why I take aristocratic and why you will see it in future. And you know, we can only take aristocratic ideas when we are not a horde. If we change to a horde, here they will change to a horde ideas. And with that, okay, I'll tell you why I took aristocratic ideas. We'll have a really powerful cavalry and cheap cavalry. Additionally, these ideas scale nicely. We have additional manpower here. As here, additional manpower. Nice thing. Yes, our orthodox religion for owning 100% of the uh, patriarch authority. It also has an increased manpower. So you can have one, you know, the infinite Byzantine horde. Yes, I, I see it that way. If I'm wrong, uh, let me know in the comments. As I have a nice opportunity again, it's time to declare another war. Ragusa this time, because she has a guarantee from Ottoman. But I have no claims, because I don't have the points to do them yet. Then we declare war on Epirus, to which we call Ragusa separately, for the recapture of our province. Of course, we attack the Ottoman Empire first, and their new capital in Sogla. I'll take the money from Ottoman only. By the way, the Ottoman is at war with the Mamluk. I don't know if I told you about it. And the Ottoman fleet is sinking. The fleet is sinking. Even when a larger one arrived, because I still thought there would be Blitzkrieg with Ottoman, but it turned out as always. This is such a very powerful event, which fires in provinces with glass or a glass, who will, in which we must have an additional 50% prestige. And the current renaissance in the glass province, you have to have it. You know, embrace it, you understand. And then if we do it as the first country in the world, we get a very powerful event, which strongly boosts the economy of a given province. Time to place some buildings, because I finally have some money, therefore we launch the appropriate icon. 
10% less building costs, always a plus. In addition, cheaper developing, well, I won't use it much, at least for now. And first I build one barrack to complete the mission. And then we definitely want to strengthen trade in Constantinople and note that Constantinople is only in one province really with us. Then we have Ragusa trade region, which I don't really depend to me right now. So I'm not spending any money on it. But to increase production by building workshops is always okay, especially on, you know, cows. We like to have cows cutlets and so on. You may notice that the map has changed a bit. That's because 20 years have passed. To be honest, I haven't done much because I'm still waiting for the last reform to be adopted. We have 10 more years to go before we can be a horde. I chose the other reforms as you see. Besides, well, I was just strengthening my trading position in Constantinople. I developed Constantinople. I built buildings for trade. I've also started improving trade in Rigu slowly. By the way, I've built a lot of workshops, some churches, even a couple of manufactories. Not too many. There are also a few markets, but as usual, only in the most important provinces that give the greatest bonuses to trade. Which means that economically, we even have a fairly rich Byzantium, although I have practically not conquered anything and, you know, real conquests. So I'll start just when we're this horde, right? In the meantime, I also improve the compositions of our armies, well, more for playing with a horde. Eventually, he'll probably wipe out the entire infantry anyway. Oh, and I will introduce the institutions of colonialism in this province. It is the most profitable. After all, we have silk here. At development level 15, remember to upgrade. Infrastructure, it is also worth expanding the ports here. Why can't I? Halo, halo, halo. And since there is already a port, let's set up a market. Well, anyway, now I'm going to quell the riots and wait, wait, it waited. Colonialism introduced and we got it! In 1516, I annexed Bulgaria anyway, but finally I can click the government decision that we are becoming a horde. And so, if you wish, we can also become any other form of government. Nothing prevents you from creating a Byzantine Republic, monarchy, theocracy, which would actually be pretty cool to conquer as well. But no, we're becoming a horde. Yes! Note that we can also change back to... Uh, monarchy, republic and so on at any time. Only unfortunately we are changing the type of units from eastern to horde, which is okay, gives us a pretty cool cavalry for now, but only for about four military technology. We also lose all states, which is also not a problem at all. We will have so many points from burning provinces. And from what I see, our economy didn't hurt so much that we turned into a horde. I literally lost three gold income. I don't know why. I'm a... If you know, you can tell me in the comment. So we have the Byzantine Horde. And if you like such things, remember that you can leave me a like. Then I have information that you like it more. Subscribe to be notified of my next episodes. Now let's move on to continuing to burn the world. Come on, Byzantium. You have an empire to recreate. That's why we're going to war with Bai. That's why we're going to war with the Ottoman Empire, which is already on the verge of collapse. No! And yeah, we've got some really strong Castus Belli tribal conquest now. I even have a fleet. Being a horde, which is very strange at the moment, I think it's the first time I've seen someone have a fleet when playing as horde. And now we have a long journey through Egypt to Tunis because unfortunately someone did not want to build transport ships. Oh, I'm on the minus income. Well, that's okay. That's how hordes should be played. The third idea that I plan to develop, I will tell you frankly, I was seriously considering to take horde ideas because it would greatly increase our manpower. And additionally, you know, cool cavalry bonuses and other things for the stability of our country. Both horde ideas and aristocratic are just very strong with espionage ideas. Anyway, you can see bonuses here. But I'm going to make a move no one expected and I'm going to choose a diplomatic one. For a simple reason, we can conquer more. And those two ideas that I was talking about, I'll take next. Besides, we can then make a really powerful build for cheap mercenaries. And remember, no one uses mercenaries in this game, so you'll never see anything like that. Oh, just like it's been a long time since I've seen Timur fall down and be eaten by his former vassals. And then Persia was born. I haven't seen anything like this before. We eat a really big piece of Ottoman. He only has a few provinces left. And now we move on to Karaman. Only before that, let's burn every one of the provinces like a real horde. We have a triumph in Asia Minor and I can finally complete the next missions. I hope they upgrade the Byzantine tree in the next patch because it's so weak. The Commonwealth was established, I'm glad. But at the same time, I'm sad because he hates me. I feel that the Hazars can compete for the best cavalry in the city. I wonder if we can handle the Egyptian fleet. We have some losses. 
and basically such a pretty even battle we only take money from Mamluk to attack him in 7 years. And it's super important. I eat almost the whole Karaman good because I'll leave these two provinces both one for Mamluk and Karaman. This will make them rather maintain an alliance with each other and I will be able to use these two countries to shorten the period of peace between us. About the same as I will use Tunis to shorten the period of peace with the Ottoman. That's why I took this one province. See how cheap it is to add provinces core super cheap coring. In the meantime, I am also improving relations with the Sunni countries that are around here. In fact, most of them are of the Shia religion. So that they don't join a potential coalition. Well, what uh, coalition against Ming? But from what I can see, India doesn't know anything about me because there's this question mark here. This one. This causes me to give them an aggressive expansion. But then they will never join a coalition against me. What we can actually use, the Protestant Reformation at the heart of the Holy Roman Empire. And actually, if you want to conquer really fast, core your territories really fast, consider changing your primary culture from Greek to Turkish, because there is much more Turkish than Greek, because there's just so little of it. Our opponents have no chance against us, we have already reached Persia, war with the Commonwealth. It is true that my main goal will be Venice because I want to regain a little bit of the province for us. But it will be a solo war. Moscow will not support us. I guess? Or maybe it will support. So let's improve Moscow's trust in us. And let's call Moscow to war. Mm, Huzzas near Constantinople. <laughs> I usually do it. But this time I feel so strange that it was not mine Huzars who came to Constantinople. And I must defend my capital. But we beat them. Look, we have a gigantic army quality advantage. Wow! And the commanders too. Krakow Warsaw. As usual, they defended themselves bravely. And Poland is coming out of this war, giving us a lot of money, plus war reparations. I don't believe that I'm sinking the, uh, the Venetian fleet, or it is sinking my fleet, we're sinking each other's fleets for sure, but I drowned them more, much more. Will we save our fortress? Yes, we have entered. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are destroying opponents. Wow, yeah, so many soldiers died and I didn't even feel it really. Oh, because they're mostly Russian. Thanks to this, we achieved a triumph in Greece. It's time to go to war with the Mamluks because someone has to clear these riots for me. Okay, that wasn't in the plans. It was surprisingly easy for us. Farther away, we can touch Persia further. We recaptured Antioch, Deus Volt. And the era of the Reformation began. And this is my favorite era to conquer, because we have an expansion of religious wars, which allows us to conquer even more. Oh, we're just getting it little too slow. We took the idea to the max, and see, we got three missionary power. Did I mention that Byzantium is one of the best countries to conquer the world, but also to convert him to the only one faith? No? Well, I'm telling you about it now. Therefore, it may even be fun to choose a religious idea as a fourth to convert the world faster. The Ottoman Empire finally collapses to easy and we drove the Turks out of Anatolia. The phoenix is rising and this will allow us to perform quite a lot of missions for further claims. Claims speed up the coring of provinces to us. I really can't use all of my manpower. Well, I can't. I go with such very large armies around the provinces. I have a skull all the time. I lose, I win battles. I can't get in with my manpower. It's recover very quickly. And we get all of Iraq for us from Persia. And that's super important to us too. Now we can to go to Fars, Baluchistan. And this will open road to India for us. Does India know about us? Why do they know about me? And no, they know, but they don't know. You know what it is. Because they get aggressive expansion, but they can't join coalition until they discovered me. Which does not change the fact that our Byzantium looks very nice. It can conquer everything. It has virtually unlimited manpower. We have a very good income. Okay, this is our real one. And the best thing is that as soon as he conquers Cyprus from Mamluk, because I forgot about it, we will be able to do a very powerful mission. Establish the theme system what will further increase the manpower in our provinces by 25%. It's super strong. Let me know if you enjoyed the first episode on this channel. If you have comments, feel free to write them below. I am also waiting for your suggestions. Remember to leave subscriptions because it will speed up the development of the channel initially. Happy conquests!